All right, so let me start with a brief discussion of confidence intervals. Let's imagine the following real world example. So suppose we're developing a drug to help um, prevent um, loss of eyesight in elderly squirrels. Okay, this is a very serious problem. And um, we developed this drug that we, um, that we hope will do this. And um, so we want to see how effective our drug is. So of course, you know, we, we go in the backyard, we find some squirrels, we give them the drug, and we see whether or not um, their eyesight um, is retained or whether it degenerates and, and that kind of thing. So we, we imagine that there is this uh, mysterious number, the success rate of the drug that we're trying to measure. So, you know, um, a certain percentage of the time the treatment is effective, we want to figure out what that percentage of time is. So, um, so how can we how can we figure that out? All right. So suppose there is this um, success rate that's out there. This some magical number p. Um, how often our drug works that we're trying to figure out through our experimentation. So, um, so we might imagine that if we give um, if we give um, in trials, we apply the medicine n times, then we expect um, PN successes, right? And so, you know, if P is the probability of getting a success. And so then our best, our estimate for, um, for P is, you know, the number of successes divided by the number of trials, you know, uh, which is N. So, um, Okay, so that's that's fine. So like here we go. Let's we so we do a trial. We give the squirrel this medication, and we find um, we get one success. Miraculously, the squirrel the squirrel's eyesight is great, and um, and we're we're successful. So our best estimate for p right now is um, well one. But how accurate is that estimate? Do we have a lot of faith in that estimate? Probably not, right? Um, so better, let's try a few more. Let's say we do 10 and we get uh, six successes. So then, well, you know, we have a success rate of six out of 10 and we're feeling, um, you know, relatively confident about, about that success, I guess. But, you know, how confident really? Like, you know, you might be comfortable telling somebody that six out of 10 and therefore your drug is doing pretty well. But what if we find out that um, that without the drug, the expectation is that it's um, five out of 10, 50%. So what if we, we believe that without the drug, we're only getting five out of 10? How would we know if we're helping, right? Now, we would be actually making a significant difference if it was six out of 10. I mean, a 10% increased um, chances, you know, that's nothing to sneeze about. But how sure are we of, a, of that six out of 10? Well, 10 is still a pretty small number, but let's do just a little kind of back of the envelope calculation just to get a feeling, okay? So now we're going to just, you know, this is a binomial random variable, but we're just going to um, take a normal approximation. Even though 10 is pretty small, let's just um, do this just to get a feeling for it. So, so we're going to, um, we're going to imagine that the number of successes in 10 trials is, um, is approximately um, normal. Um, and if it was a normal random variable, then we should know what it's, uh, if we know it's mean invariance, then we've described it. So, um, for, um, you know, the, the, so of course we don't know what P is, um, where, so there's, but, you know, so there's some unknown mean, which is P and, um, and an unknown variance. And we're gonna just like um, use the um, so the, the variance of a binomial distribution, by the way, is uh, n p q, where um, q is one minus p, and n is the number of, of trials that you're doing. Um, oh, and sorry, the mean isn't p; it's p times ten, uh, ten p, and n is ten down here. Excuse me. 
Okay. So, um, so we expect, um, so we, we have 10 PQ for the unknown variance, but we're going to just approximate um, P with, um, with six out of 10 and Q with four out of 10. You know, how, how reasonable is this? Well, you know, this is another discussion, but you know, it's what we have, so we'll, we'll use it for now. We'll say that six out of 10 maybe is so-so for P, but it'll be what we'll use for the variance. So, um, okay, so we'll get 10 times six over 10 times four over, over 10, 10 times four over 10, okay. And so we get uh, 24 over 10, which is, you know, um, about uh, two, uh, so, yeah, 24 over 10, two and two fifths, which is 2.4. Right, 24 over 10 is 2.4, okay. Yeah, uh, anyway, so that's the variance. Um, let's take the square root for the standard deviation, which is about, um, which is about um, 0.5-ish, right? This is about 0.5-ish. And so, um, so that means that two standard deviations is roughly, um, you know, is roughly one uh, tenth. Sorry, is roughly one. Excuse me, roughly one. And so we expect that, um, you know, 95% certain that if you have a, if you have a, a normal random variable, you're 95% certain that your measurement of it. Um, is going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. So we're 95% certain that the, that the, um, that the actual, um, actual mean, which is of course 10p, the, the number, the expected number of successes, is within one of six out of 10. Okay. Uh, not six out of ten of six, the number of successes, right? So the actual mean is within ninety-five percent certain within one out of ten. So, so in other words, let's say ten p um, minus six is less than uh, one with ninety-five percent certainty, right? So p that this is about ninety-five percent, and so that tells us that we have some reasonable estimates. Of, of what P is, right? So we got, oh, let's see, so we want to get a bound on P, so we get, let's see, 10P minus 6 is between minus 1 and 1, and so if I add 6 to both sides, I get 5 less than 10P less than uh, 7 with 95% certainty, and P is between um, 5 out of 10 and 7 out of 10. 50 and 70 percent with 95 percent certainty okay so um okay so that's pretty good but you can see that if you were trying to decide whether or not you were definitely doing better than 50 percent this becomes a little bit delicate you really have to think about whether or not i mean because it's close now right we have to think about whether or not that assumption of like using um that six out of ten for calculating our variance was legitimate we have to wonder about whether or not our approximation to a normal distribution from this binomial was legitimate, because these things might actually matter if we're looking for whether or not we're within that 5% cutoff. Okay, so um, these are a few of the delicate issues, but uh, that's the overview, um, at least, of the uh, interval estimation. So this is an interval um, estimate for P right here. So in this case, we'd say that 50% less than P less than 70% is a 95% confidence interval for this unknown value P. We're 95% confident that P is somewhere between 50% and 70%.